and welcome to the CCG Esports Twitch site. We are here for round three of the ESEA season, Advanced League, where CCG looks to stay undefeated going up against Crouchute, who are currently one and one. Yeah. Uh, one quick risk, though. We are going to be playing on Anubis uh, to move forward for this third matchup, which both of the wins for CCG have been on the, in the season so far. While on the other hand, uh, Crowdshot have actually only played Ancient so far, and hence they're looking for a difference. They lost their game, their last game, uh, with quite a big lead. So they're looking to possibly change things around, find some new figures. And then since we are still in the early stages of ESEA Advanced, uh, this is probably the best time for them to do so as well. But CCG, they have history. They have uh, they have history on Anubis. They have history on Ancient. Uh, Honestly, the map that has mostly been played in advance, they're, they're, they tend to really know their stuff on. But the knife round, I believe, has come to a conclusion, but a player seems to have been disconnected from the side of crowd shot. So as soon as they connect and the match can begin, uh, we will get right into it. But Tucker, this is your first time around here. I'm not entirely sure if you've seen any CCG matches, but you got any expectations uh, looking at the stat lines you've seen so far? Well, I'm expecting CCG to look a lot more comfortable than Crowd Shoot because CCG, CCG, of course, their last two matches have been on Anubis. This is their third time here. They're currently undefeated. Their first match of the season, though, they did narrowly win 13-11, to but still... It's on Anubis. This is their comfort zone throughout season 48. This is where they have made their home. This is where they have stomped their grounds all the way through and through. So Crouch Shoot is going to have to put up a really big game if they're going to want to take down the undefeated CCG. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems like we do have our fifth connected from the side of Crouch Shot, but uh, CCG have surprisingly taken a tech timeout. So... Hopefully we can get that sorted and uh, be in the game uh, quite shortly. But but you are correct. Theoretically, CCG should uh, be a better team in, in this matchup specifically, considering their recent uh, history on this map in the season so far. But CCG, it's not even about the recent history, actually. Anubis has been their one of their go-to maps early, uh, early season for the past two advanced seasons. And oh, I seem to have disconnected. In the game so while we get that sorted uh again anubis something that they have really loved playing through and through across the last two or three seasons as far as i can remember as far as as far as i have seen ccg play as well so theoretically they should look good but again you cannot underestimate any opponents any match could really be the turning point and it's not like crowdshot have never played uh, anubis they have some reps and they have quite convincing wins in anubis as well from last season yeah ESEA Advance is such an interesting point when it comes to counter-strike because you have some of the best teams in the world and also some of the teams that just got a lucky shot to be there. It's such a weird spot to be in, and the games are incredibly entertaining. I know, I know, I know you know Inflect. I know everybody who watches, who has been watching CCG for a while knows that these games have been nothing short of miraculous. I mean, the 13 to 11 on Anubis, that's crazy. Whenever you throw an unpredictable map such as Anubis into the mix, it just makes things so much better because who wants to see Mirage every map? Does too. Who wants to see Ancient for the 18th time in the ESEA advanced season? Give us something like Vertigo. Give us Anubis. And Anubis, of course, we've seen a lot of it here at CCG, but Throughout the entire ESEA, it's around the middle of the pack when it comes to how much is this map played. Oh yeah, but Tucker, my friend, you are at CCG's channel. The, the, over here, you will not be seeing Mirage at all. Instead, you'll get tired of seeing Ancient and Anubis. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. The amount of amount of Anubis and Ancients I've seen in C at CCG alone is probably more than I've ever casted at any other tournament collectively. So. But it seems like there there is going to be a server reset. Uh, we're, we will be moving to a new server. So before uh, before we waste any more of your time talking, so we're, we are going to move to a quick break so we can be prepared and make sure you guys are prepared and not tired as well to head straight into the action as soon as possible. Do you agree? 
And welcome back to the CCG Twitch channel. We are sorry about the technical difficulties, but we're here and we're ready to get the Counter-Strike action started. We were waffling about how much we've seen so much Anubis, and we're going to see it for the third time this season as the undefeated CCG take on Crouch Shoot. The pistol round's now underway. Well, CCG is starting off on the D side. It's a favorable side for them to work on. Hopefully they can get up a quick lead to kick things off right here, but a lot of aggression early on over towards mid door. Three players are currently defending B side, but they have absolutely no contact. They spot up their out over towards middle. Now the flash are gonna allow their ent initial entry in for Radiant, leading the charge into the A side. The A side has been cleared up. There's gonna be a pinch set up. Fiend over towards main. The over towards main gets shut down. Rico from behind has some help available. Has found one. Jake Asper with a trade. Corn follows up, and now it's all down for 2v2. Fortunately for CCG, the bomb is stranded on the site. Roka as well. <laughs> oh my goodness, as I was saying, Roka had a great spot, but no longer does he. Immediately sent straight to the Shadow Realm with a nice headshot, and Pip has another one with the P250. It's gonna be CCG taking round one. Good start. A little shaky. Uh, you know, I was for for the first few seconds, I was actually confused about where exactly they wanted to head out. They they were split up kind of, uh, and without even regrouping, those three players went highly aggressive towards middle to hit the A side. They smoked out the B connector area, and they just went in. Uh, uh, thankfully, though, they got the timings right and were able to capitalize on it. Rico for a second looked like a dangerous man. The amount of damage he dealt and was able to find a frag as well. But CCG come out on top, they have a buy working in this one as well, two SMGs, two Galils, and AK as well, a decent amount of utility as well, and it seems like Fiend Fiend is over at the time, and CCG's Brian Tapper is out, Fiend find ones, but that's all she wrote, a strip counters with three of their own. It was a great idea from Crouchute, I love the aggression early on, that's how you gotta play those pistol rounds. But unfortunately, the Galils were just a little bit too much, and CCG is going to take this one as well. Unfortunately for Crouchute, they couldn't get any more money than what they already had from the loss bonus. They couldn't get as many kills as they maybe wanted, but, you know, you got to take what you can get whenever you're going up against these big buys, especially when you only have pistols. A valiant effort from Crouchute, but they just couldn't get it done. A little bit disappointing, but now they're able to buy, and hopefully, for them, not us, they can make a progress. Have to wait and find out how much exactly they can do. They are holding their lanes over towards middle for the time being. Fiend quite aggressive. He does have the help of Rico. Those are actually justified, but CCG looking to do the same thing they did over the, the Western round. Three players currently fighting aggressively over towards middle. Trip. Be the first one that peeks behind the flash is perfect. Rico gets isolated in the corner, no help available. The smoke is gonna allow them to further push deeper in. Floridian moves back to possibly uh, to get the bomb and now regroup with their teammates. Again, they still have a couple of players lurking around. Trip, he is still close by to the pack while there's just one player lurking outside B, and it seems like they're looking to make a rotation. They, the CTs, they do have a read, but it's going to be too much trouble as there's only one player available to defend, and he's going to have to do three gloves, one frag, immediately traded out, and four, and he's being a menace over towards middle, and now that his team has the side control, the bomb is down as well. He can just play for time. Bronte left in the one versus three. This round has shown great restraint from CCG, and it seems as if it's going to be a save, as I don't believe that Bronte wants to do anything with it at all. I mean, they got an M4. They got a smoke grenade. They have most of their armor still left up, 91 if you count the armor as well. Or I guess not 91, but 123 if you count the armor with 91 armor. Anyway... The math and the big numbers aside, another great round from CCG. Like I said, showing discipline and showing restraint. There was a couple of times in that site, 
in that round where they were beat out. They had a fight that was not going their way. They didn't try to push it. They didn't ego peek it. They kept themselves calm. They kept themselves confident as well. They lost one fight, but that did not affect them at all. They stepped back, they regained, they regrouped, and now they are sitting really pretty with a 3-0 lead and a big old economic advantage. Oh yeah, and it's, it's honestly a pain to be a CD uh, economically in CS2 with the, only, with the round count having dropped down to an MR12 and the, C, uh, the CSGO economy remaining all pretty much the same uh, moving into CS2 as well, which was which was absolutely terrible uh, for CD. So that remains consistent and it actually actually even worse now that as there's just not as much time available for teams to recover financially. But CCG, they're looking to capitalize on it completely. Trip once again lurking around over for his teammate all by himself has found a frag. The pistols, they can only do so much. Feed on a fiend already tagged down to just 56. And CCG, they're not making this round any more easier for Crowdshot. One minute to go, and it's already one kill going the way of CCG. Jay Casper nearly finds a second one, and it might not end up in a kill but it does a lot of chip damage. That's going to really affect this as we get later on in the round when the time is really thin. Jasper and Gorn both find one of their names. They got looking for another and Gorn actually does go down, but he's the only person that has fallen so far. Granted, tagged down to 11 HP, but he still breathes and trip now on the flank. Wants to take it out of his hands. Hence, no rifles safe for the side of crowd shoot heading into the fifth round of this half, but they are gonna have a full bank to work with, hence, possibly their first round uh, of good fight for their first round behind it. But CCG, they're looking too good right now. Two, uh, four clean rounds. They had four people alive in the round that uh, in the prior round as well. It seems like they they really have their rhythm uh, in their favor right now. I really liked how they hunted down that final M4 because they knew that the last player alive was the only one with that M4, and if they got that gun off of him. There was no shot the economy was going to be crippled for these next couple rounds. And look at it. Sure, they have a full buy. But if they lose this round, it's over. That's wraps. You might as well just send them home packing. Because it'll be 5-0, likely 6-7-0 and after the save rounds conclude. And that's very difficult to come back from. Fiend has a great shot to start things off with the op. And CCG, CCG has to fight this one from behind. Now all four, uh, all four players going head on. Brainded, the first one to fall. Howard is now all by himself playing around the pillar. Gets one, Rico trades him out. But Jay Casper continues being a menace. Fiends up, wanted to find something as he was boosted up a little bit for uh, there, but the bomb is down, the smoke's out, and it's gonna allow CCG to back off safely. An op might not be the prime weapon to actually play this, but oh, a good Molotov to force JJ to chill off, but he's safe. It didn't exactly find head, but eventually JJ beats out. Fiend finds the frag and Roka follows up, and hence the first round secured for crowd shoot. Yeah, the Molotov looked a little bit buggy. It did not make it up on that ledge that JJ was standing on. However, I guess the spread was able to cover it to do damage, force them out of the position. I'm not sure, but crowd shoot, very versatile round. Despite having points where they were struggling, they really played that one well. They got the first kill, the first blood was theirs, and then they were able to stay in front for the most part. Able to keep two guns over as well. You're going to notice that in a couple of rounds if they start to slip a little bit because those guns that they saved over, I think it was two M4s, that rounds up to about $6,000, which says a lot more than it might look like it does. But now we go to round six, halfway through this first half, and JJ Chinchilla already has the first frag straight through the noggin. Already a frag on the way of CCG as they look to recover from the loss. Smoke going for Cape Ruka safe, but all oh, these individual fights, these individual picks 
are absolutely glorious. JJ Chinchilla just finding the right timing, finding the right frags, and looking for the third, but gets denied. Brainted. Nice headshot to shut him down, but they're still at Amanda. So want his crowd shoot. They need to move back. They have the read here. They are rotating over towards the A site. Exactly where CCG are stacked towards. It's all going to be a matter of timing. And oh no, this is bad. CCG, they're going to run into a three-player stacked site if they decide to execute this. But it seems like they are having other ideas. Or... And for the time being, they should be correct ones. They're, it seems like they're expecting somebody to be on the lurk and possibly going to try and fake the A site using a couple of smokes and, and move over towards B instead. And the, the amount of utility that has been invested is quite a lot. They And the B site, they're going to be able to get it for absolutely free behind it. Big freebies for CCG. And a really smart fake play on the A site as now it forces the rotate from Crouch U and it takes that lurky player a long time to get over there. That's going to drain off a lot of time. And only two of them have the diffuse kit. So that might be a little bit challenging when it comes to the late round. Let's see how this unfolds. One man advantage, CCG. A quick trade. Looking for more to follow up, and it seems like it's just gonna be a, a save round for the CTs here. The AWP and the M4 already pushed all the way back. I, you mentioned it, the, 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 uh, the rotation from the flanker was just a, gonna take too long at that point. Having lost a single player was pretty much the round done for them, and that's exactly what happened. As soon as Roka fell, they knew they didn't have enough time. A one defuse kit was all that they had to work with at that point, and both of the players were weren't even close by so at that point if the defuse kit player dies the round was anyway done and dust so might as well just save those rifles uh keep their economy in a little bit of a balance um heading into the next one as we see four rifles and a shotgun surprisingly from the side of uh crowd shoot but on ct side it, it definitely has worked before uh against ccg we're gonna have to wait and find out if it can if it's gonna happen yet again but fiend he continues to live up to his name with that all oh, finding the first blood Can't find uh, that's gonna be the plan for him as he takes a shot but it's got the dark nobody there rico out gunning core and in the close range encounter as well Gets it up for the two-man oh, no. advantage. Going to crowd shoot. CCG caught off guard. And there you were talking about it. The auto shoddy making its presence known straight to the head of trip. And Roka's going to get away with an AK. Scott free. Five versus two. That, that's, a, that's a good upgrade right there. Right there. You're happy with it. For someone who is just playing at the A sign all by themselves. A nice skin on it as well. Uh, but Rico now holding down mid all by himself, still finds one, looking for another, but JJ Chinchilla is all that's alive. Gonna look to save the AWP maybe, but I'm not entirely sure how long he's gonna be allowed to do that since he has to live for 40 more seconds. Uh, uh, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they decide to punch for it, but JJ Chinchilla just falls in their lap himself, and that's the second round confirmed for Crouchy. Yeah, that one looked really good. Despite having a shaky economy, which wasn't necessarily terrible, they had four rifles as well as a shotgun. It's still not as good as having all five M4s, but that's the importance of saving those guns from the last round previously. They had a couple of guns that they were able to save over, and it got their economy in a doable spot. Not great, not even good. I would say leaning towards bad, but manageable. Played their cards right, and they got the job done. And they start this round off perfectly as well. Fiend taking down JJ with another one to boot. Fiend is making the crowd spot proud right now. Two kills one as well already. The does third confirmed as well. Goran forced out of the corner. Looking for more. And oh my goodness. What a shot from a tech nine at that range. Take me now. The oh. should be retrieved. And boy, boy, Goran. This man, uh, this man never ceases to wonder. One of the key players in a lot of CCG matches. A, a, a very successful MVP around here as well. But. 
so far, we're about to far to award anybody the MVP. The game has just begun, and they're looking to enter the side yet again, and well, the game may have just begun, but the round has come to a conclusion with the advantage being narrowed down further as the third round gets put on board for Crouch Street. Starting to come to that back end of the half. This is where teams can be made or broken. And hopefully for CCG, they're able to make this good half into a great half. There's a possibility for 9-3. The last couple of rounds have been pretty rough, but this is not a dead ball game just yet. There is still so much time. There is still so much rounds to be played and so much Counter-Strike to be had. You can't give up now. You've lost the last two, but you're still in the lead. Stay calm. Keep your cool. Try to win out these last couple and get yourself the best look going into your CT side. To infiltrate sites, so they're gonna have to rely on finding a few frags. Help them do so, and hopefully not lose players in the process of playing out. Again, they're already down with just three smokes, one Molotov, and a single flash. So not the prettiest uh, of sides for them. Still a minute left on the clock. And you can see how crowd shooter adjusting. Uh, at one point, they were giving a lot of individual fights out to CCG for free. And now they're they're playing a lot more together. They're coordinating their movements. Look at that. As soon as Fiend is moving, you see the number one player moving as well alongside him. Different routes, but making matter. And Floridian sneaks into the side, finds one. The second headshot connects as well. The flash is amazing to follow up and is going to be able to keep Floridian alive, but not for long as Rico and Fiend both find themselves a kill. And now we're tied up, 3 versus 3 yet again, and behind the smoke they look to enter the site, and the bomb should be able to go down. Firing through the smoke. Bob's been planning, got to hold it off for 40 seconds, and Floridian had so much space taken up, and then they got aggressive, their ego took over, and it ended up getting them killed, and now this is an even situation when this could be a 4 versus 3. That could bite them if they're not careful. They've got the first one, but it's traded off immediately. Very rough shots for Jay Casper. It's turned into a one versus one. Trip has to win this out or hold off for just a little bit. And they've won it through the smoke. No need to hold out. Just take a couple of pot shots. He knows where he is. Yeah, and luckily for him, both of the players, I believe, were tagged down as well. Especially the latter was only living on 19 HP. And at that point, Trip, all he had to do was connect just a couple of shots and he was able to just do just that and hence the lead still up at th uh, up by three rounds for CCG their economy has not been completely broken down but their, their guns are, they're not pretty we see a couple of SMGs and a Galil J Casper who takes that nade straight to his head but still is breathing somehow Still breathing. This is a big round for CCG to win. They're able to take this one away from Crouch Shoot. This could cripple their economy for the rest of the half and possibly just propel them to 9-3, which would be massive switching on to the CT side. Look at the desperation that Crouch Shoot have. They have absolutely no utility, so they know that they, they're going to have to move. They're going to have to play on map control right here. Roka, he is the only person that has any util whatsoever. He's the lone warrior or towards the A side, so he can stay all the way back. But the rest of his teammate, they have absolutely nothing. They're going to have to play the rest of themselves, play stacked, and that's what they tried to do. But uh, so far, it hasn't worked out for them. Lost a fellow of theirs. The Molotov already invested the smoke to follow up as CCG are being held back just for the time being behind the flash four and goes in he doesn't care about it and for, but luckily for him there's only Roka waiting for the flash it's not gonna do a lot to, hell, to hold them back Rico falls as well as he pushes through the smoke and there's only two players remaining and it might just be a save already for the all but brain dead with an mp9 might want to try and go for a flank to possibly get an ak but that's not going to be crazy he, he picks up an m4 and is just going to run back as ccg put seventh on board 
You just gotta take what you can get. If you're Branted, no chance you win a one versus five with an MP9. CCG is not gonna let you have that because they still think that it's a two versus five. They don't have the intel that it's a save just yet. So I feel like you have to find something and then run for it. That's what Branted did. So kudos to them. Now back to CCG. They played that perfectly. They got the job done. They lost one after the round, but you know, the economy's good. You can afford to lose that. The Everyone that's still alive on Crouch Shoot already has a gun, so that doesn't matter. And still, the economy is not great for them. They still have to struggle. There are going to be weak points in this next round for Crouch Shoot. CCG, not necessarily the case. They have a Galil, they have a MAC-10, but they're on the T side. The MAC-10 is no worse than some of these other assault rifles. If you play that right, a MAC-10 is, in my opinion, a top three gun. It's so quick, it's not very accurate, but also just I mean, bum rush. Simply I mean, bum rush. There's so many little corners on Anubis. I'm sorry for the rant, but I love the MAC-10. Don't bring any bum on. <laughs> top three. Five, seven. <laughs> Five seven arguably could be top five, but don't. I mean, okay, that's an argument for off the stream for that we're gonna have later down the line. But fiend, man, the consistency does not stop. Big Astro pulls out an op of his own. He finds one behind it. Goran gets big to get the slow with a quick grade. He follows up with one more. Rico down from behind, putting him in a desperate position. And now it's all down to Jake Gasper up. He has a CZ in his hand as well, so, but he's going to have to isolate these fights out, and oh my god, the no scope to shut things down for the fourth round of crowd shoot. You know what, Inflect? I, I'm actually going to retract that statement. MAC-10 is top four, because I like the MP9 better. I mean, you're putting SMGs in a, in a game where there are like... I don't even know how many rifles there are. I am aware there are a lot of rifles, but realistically, realist, realistically, there's only three or so that are real that are really good. And I'm not counting in. I'm not counting like the M4A4 as well as the M4A1S. I'm counting the M4 they're as one. Guns. They're they're very difficult. <laughs> they are difficult. I will give you that. But I'm talking about primaries. Primaries simply. Well, you have the AWP as well, the AKM4 and all. Oh, That's you do the have the AWP. But Drift, you... he doesn't care for it. <laughs> the, the AWP hasn't been able to do any damage whatsoever so far in this round. But, oh, the nade it could prove to be deadly, and it is. Drip already gone down for already an awful timing, but in, it doesn't matter. He still gets the kill. He, finally, that AWP, as you mentioned, comes into the mix. And, oh, it blasts through two players straight away. Eventually does fall, but now... It's Jcas... Uh, sorry, it's all down... Rico up in a one round two might not expect him and there it is the trade corn was down to six HP but it doesn't matter he gets those wins so we go to half eight to four great stuff from CCG and now we're right back at an even pace it's a five it's a five pistol team versus a five pistol team nothing different a little bit of utility on each side Maybe not. Maybe we just see a couple of pistols, a couple of bot pistols, maybe a Desert Eagle, maybe a 5.7, maybe a P250. I do love me some P250. I love me some of the 5.7. I'm just going to have to see. It seems as if Crouch you going a little bit more of the util heavy route. CCG's not doing that. They they want their bigger guns. They, they want the dualies. Jay and July and the beauty of this man getting frags through smokes has... Never been short, but, I, but Jake Asper, on the other hand, sadly has gone down. Warren looking for more. Those dualies only good for one. And Jaden Jinchala, are you crazy? He gets he he deals enough damage to Rico to be the one that finishes his teammates off. But now it's a one versus two. Jaden Jinchala did a lot of havoc with his knife right there. But it's certainly possible now uh, with Drip being the last one alive currently the leading uh, player in the server as well. 14 frags, only 5. That's the best KD as well. And now in a 1 versus 3, the current fight is isolated, but the bomb eventually gets planted. Oh, a nice headshot! He can find the first, but Rico confirms his immediate raid. 
and hence it's up to eight and five. The next round looking likely in favor of crowd shoot as well. Hence, uh, CCG now possibly in a painful uh, instant. Yeah, they. I think they came out a little bit too aggressive when it came into the big skirmish part of that round. You know, the mid part where they had kill after kill after kill. I feel like CCG might have done a little bit too much. They could have just fell back, played it simple, got a couple kills. Because JJ, no need to go for the crazy knife. You're, no need for Michael Jordan from halfway across the field. Or halfway across the court, I guess. Michael Jordan played basketball, not football or baseball. No need to jump down. And now CCG is starting to struggle with it just a little bit. As they're in the second round and they're forced to use the best of what they got, which is unfortunately only the USPS. Well, they are gambling this round. All five stacked out towards the A side. And they're getting karma right here. It's a wrong read for them. Crowd shoot have rotated out over towards the B side. It's going to be a free plan for them. The flash invested from the side of, excuse me, from the side of CCG to further investigate the A side. They don't need to. The bomb starts to go down. Rico has been spotted. And Ranger from that range to turn the frag onto the Casper Floridian. Finds a headshot, but this is still 4 versus 4. Fane gets stagged down through the smoke as well. So this is certainly looking like something could come out of this right for CCG, but the likelihood of it happening is quite slim. Warren has found a MAC-10, but Florid only with 8 bullets in his USP. There's so much he can do. Well, Fane is getting a flag. Another one to confirm that, and oh, Roka just goes. Russell's on that and Mac 10 and oh a, a nice brief fire on the floor and, and that's the sixth round secured only a two round deficit remaining but now CCG are going to have a full buy to work with Mac 10's galore for that round makes me re makes me really really happy to see the little sh the little shooter CCG has enough to buy up now I like the buy that they're going with Five assault rifles, keeping things very simple. As that last round, we like to call we like to call this one the bonus round. We'd like to call the last one the anti-eco round. As they didn't buy up anything at all. It was just five USPS. That way, you can buy up in the next round. Because now, they have five rifles. They have a little bit of utility to go with it. This is the round that they are slanted to win. Looking at the other side, Crouch Shoot does not quite have all that. They have... Looks like three rifles, two SMGs. And that's just not going to be as good as five rifles. However, the plus side for them is they have a little bit more utilities and they can use that MAC-10 offensively. It's a little bit more difficult to use the MAC-10 defensively. Already in the face of Jay Gasper, but he doesn't know that. Eventually, Jay Gasper do find a couple of frag strip gun continues to dominate the site. Those users remain. Fiend falls and so does the C4. Actually, never mind the C4 is on. So, excuse me, the auto director said Fiend was over towards middle when the player died. So I, I got that messed up, so I apologize. But the auto director is not really helping me out right now. But regardless of that, the ni that's the ninth round on board. <laughs> three, a three round and one, yeah. The auto driver in CS2 is terrible, honestly. It needs a lot of fixing. Well, if you're if there's a some chance you're hearing this, please do something about it. Uh, but now, surprisingly, a quickly, crowd shoot are on the back foot, uh, and their economy is already completely broken down. Having won two rounds in a row, I expect them to have some sort of a buy at least. But it's only going to be some pistol upgrades and one AK. I don't like that one AK buy. I think you need a couple of a little bigger guns to support that AK, like maybe an SMG, maybe a shotgun as well. But when it's just one AK and two, three, four pistols, it's just not doing it for me as I feel like there's a lot more risk than the reward possibility as that's the risk you run into. The AK is still alive, and but all of a sudden, that's the only big gun you have. You have that Desert Eagle unless Fiend pops off, which he does right there. He's got it. 
it's going to be really rough. And oh. now it's just the Desert Eagle. And of course, it's a oh one versus God. two, but it's not even going to matter because Fiend just has has a, has a knack to click on heads. And Fiend did just that. Well, you see, dog, you were talking about something risk and reward, my friend. <laughs> That's one good way to shut me off. No offense, of course. Uh, but wow. What, what a player, Fiend, honestly, the consistency that he has been playing with Tucker, I mean, come on, you don't get to see these consistent shots, we saw him on defense with the with those off clicks, it's absolutely fantastic, and now he can he convert those into eagle shots as well, Fiend definitely is one of the player up for MVP, if his team is Ooh, and Rico starts things off really well as well. Headshot to Jake Casper takes a little bit of damage, but that's still a five versus four is better than a five v five any day, even if you are really low. And Roka still has 71 armor, so if they're able to survive, take that onto the next round. That's just a little bit less money that they have to spend in the future. As this round starts to mature, they are favoring the west side, and it's another kill, another two kills rather, going the way of Crouch Shoot and CCG. Now, having to fight this one halfway down the mountain. Corin and Trep. The better fraggers so far. Four CCG left all by themselves, and now it's all down to Trep. He's he's gonna save the M4, probably look for some exit frags to try and deal some further damage onto Crouch's economy, but for how effective that's going to be since nobody is moving towards his path. So Trep is going to be saving that M4 where the round deficit is only down to one for crowd shoot. And suddenly we have a game on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. And since these two are on the CT side, it's going to be difficult for them to recover as well with their, with their economy completely broken down. Now three players currently sitting at 24 only one M4 to work with, one player on 3,000. Maybe a pistol upgrade comes through, but other than that, it's only going. They're they're relying on that single M4 to try and deal some miraculous amount of damage. It's got to be a collateral or something of that nature, because sure, the pistols can do a lot of damage. If you can land the headshots, then you have a realistic chance at winning this round. However. I'm noticing Crouch Shoot is really good at hiding the head whenever they need to. They're going to force a lot Ooh. of body shots. You can't give Fiend the easy shot as well because Jay Channel and Chilla is going to get taken down every single time. Fiend has that shot, has that really nice aim, and that time it gets that one done, and Fiend's looking for more. Whoa. Wow. A lot of damage. Floridia is counting his lucky stars that it did not get that kill. Look at that quarter. And well, Trip's not going to be as lucky. Floridia, a nice headshot, but won't be able to turn start to go down one by one as well, leaving only Corn behind up against five. And we are pretty much all dying up. It's this point with Corrin hoping that somebody just rushes towards him and, and he can find a frag we're using the 5-7 maybe we'll grave a rifle behind it uh, but other than that there's only so much the man can do uh, in, in his situation Fiend somehow alive with 3 HP and he found two really really good frags the the first one sort of fell in his lap the second one uh, the second shot he got unlucky with that wall bang but Trap was stuck into a corner. There was only so much movement. Oh, well, there is third as well. Fiend continues to dominate the lobby with his op and remains prominent throughout as the score finally gets tied up. CCG's given up a lot of space every single round. The timeout is going to be called. I really like when they chose to do this. It's now tied up. This game is not out of their hands. It's only four more rounds for each team to win this one out. That is very much doable. CCG, I feel the answer is going to be not giving them as much space early. There's been a couple of times where they've peaked 
really early and they've given the kill and thus given them up a lot of space. You have utility for a reason. You have Molotovs. You have smokes. Throw them out. You bought them for a reason. A big, big reason. Throw your mollies. Throw your smokes. Throw your frag grenades. It might not get a kill. It might not even do damage. However, it keeps them off for a second or two. It delays them for that much amount of time. There's only two minutes in a game of Counter-Strike, or in a round of Counter-Strike, rather. Those two seconds are going to be a big difference maker. You just have to use your tilling weight a little bit better. The round, the first team, the team to win this round will be the first to hit double digits as well. Question is, who is going to do that? Who gets that lead moving forward? Corin, currently all by himself, sitting over towards middle. Brain to beat down, breaking his shoulder for a little bit, but Corin, he's going to get hurricaned as soon as he commits to it, and it seems like he very much is committed. Oh, Rico, just down to 12 HP. He, the util damage alone has been just too much but JJ Chinchilla out with the rifle finds the first as he's starting to lurk around he's starting to feel the confidence the change is being implemented from CCG and they're already starting to show its effect the Molotov doesn't exactly completely work out JJ Chinchilla eventually created but Florida to replace him now and has some help available as well all three players Coming from the from cave side, Florida, no immediate help. As he gets isolated due to the smoke, and Brainted takes him out of the equation. Now a three versus three. How do you retake this? There's a big smoke in the way. There's still quite a bit of utility on the crouch shoot side. That's how with an op. Trip lands the AWP shot and puts the advantage right back in their favor. But Fiend evens things up yet again. Trip, though, the better offer this round. And by the skin of their teeth, it's going to be CCG getting to double digits first. And they steal away the op from Fiend. They're going to have two ops going into this next round. Trip and Corn going back and forth to win that three versus four. And in the two versus two trip, comes out uh, on top against Feed in the op battle. A really crucial kill. Anybody in that two versus two, whoever finds the first the first prank in the two versus two, wins that round right there. And CCG, it seems like that timeout, that, that timeout, it worked out for them. Sure, it was a really close call. They sort of even got desperate uh, for a few seconds there in this round. But Jay Casper. Out with another two ops on board for CCG and Brainted still conceding a lot of Uter damage. Utility use has significantly improved with just a single minute of timeout for CCG. The response has been immaculate. The sudden shift of how. CCG reading this has been so impressive. Trip with the uh, second off continues to provide. There's the second. Corn follows up, leaving only one behind. And Trip confirms it as well. That's three for him on board. As now CCG are only two away from closing out this round and confirming their three win streak on Anubis and in the season. The utility has improved tenfold. This is what I said they needed. They fixed it, and that is apparently just what the doctor ordered. CCG now only one round off of match point, and it's all thanks to the utility. The frag grenades have been so good. The Molotovs have been so good. Did you see near that mid pot, near that boat, how there was so much util damage done to Crouch you? No chance were you going to get past that. The molly was huge. The frags were huge. It brought someone down to 8 HP. I can't quite remember who it was, but so much utility damage alone really sealed that round out. Yeah, and utility damage alone, it has a lot of effect on the mental of your opposing team as well. So you have to take that into account because whatever CCG did, they, they definitely put, they definitely scared 
crowd shoot a, a little bit. The players, at least, that were weak, they, they're they afraid to take those engagements. They're, they're not as confident, of course, only one shot, and they could die. As you, sa as you said, Brainted was tagged down to 8 HP. Uh, so a bullet to the feet and he's dead as well so the, the confidence uh, alone can make the difference and win or lose a round so ccg props to them for doing so perfectly in the last two rounds but this time around it seems like crouch themselves have changed things a little bit three ak's one tech nine but don't have a lot of utility to work with only one flash and a molotov so this is their, going to be their only shot to enter into a site and with time ticking down as well with it currently at 25 seconds, Corrin being all by himself onto the A site, he's gonna have to go humongous to hold on, Jay Chinchilla finds the right time and leaves the three behind, Corrin follows up, the rated falls, Rico alongside Fiend. Now onto the side, 10 seconds remaining, Rico is desperate to plant the bomb and he should be able to do so, but that's all she wrote for him. And officially CCG head on to match point after losing, I believe, three or four rounds in a row. They respond back with three of their own. Three kills for JJ Chinchilla as well. It's all starting to click again for CCG and Best case scenario for CCG, the economy is not great for crowd shoot. They have enough for this round, but if it comes down to a one versus three in CCG's favor, even if they choke out that clutch, there's still no money. Crowd shoot has to scramble for funds and scramble for any chance to win out the next round and then the next. So this is looking really good for CCG as they have a lot of give. The problem is CCG doesn't seem to have a lot of reserves themselves. They can not, they do not want to push this further. They want to end it right now. They want to end it at an advantage and Fiend, he doesn't allow that. He doesn't allow it, uh, allow it as straightforward as uh, CCG may want it to be. Currently, a three versus four. Floridian all by himself, trying to deal damage. He's found a frag. Looking for more with the USB and gets the headshot! And oh, and through the smoke! Oh. Only one alive. It's all down to Rico. The top fragger so f the, the second top fragger so far for crowd shoot. Full HP. Up against three. It's already at down. One versus two. Drop still alive and it's going to be enough to confirm the game, the round. And CCG confirm their win streak behind it as well. What a turnaround behind that timeout alone, not losing a single round afterwards. And CCG, they remain consistent. They remain true to Anubis, to themselves. An amazing win. 13 to 9 is the final score. CCG got it done one more time. And that timeout, I'm going to say it. Is this might not be an actual player, but I want to give that timeout an MVP. It was 9-9 nine to nine when they called it, and then it was four rounds in a row after that. I think they got a little overheated. They had to talk about what they were doing wrong. They were giving up a lot of space. They weren't using their utility hardly at all. They were just letting Crouch Shoot do whatever they wanted to, whenever they wanted to, and they needed to change that out. Anubis is a relatively balanced map, maybe favoring the T side a little bit. So you really have to keep in mind that the T's are going to have the easier time, quote unquote, easier time. You have to make it as hard as possible for them because they're likely going to win more rounds. So as soon as CCG gave them a bit of a rougher time, all of a sudden, Crouch Shoot couldn't figure out exactly what to do. And that's where it all started falling down. Crouch, you started stepping on each other's toes. They started miscommunicating. They started making big mistakes that ended up leading to the win for CCG. Overall, a great team-based game. And overall, I am going to struggle finding an MVP. I think everybody played great. JJ, of course, popped off. But, I mean, you can't also factor out the support players as well, man. There's so many good options. Yeah. The, 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 there truly are, but again, it all just came down to how consistent CCG was. And, and you break down how it, it all went down really nicely, I have to say. But 
and I believe we are going to have an interview as well for some further insights about yes. what exactly went down. I really want to know what what the what happened in in that time itself for them to have changed so miraculously because the rounds that they were losing sometimes they weren't even close sometimes they were sure it came down to a two versus two quite often but just having that comfortability having that con uh having that co uh confidence to just completely shift completely change their movement style completely change how they were reacting in just a minute it, it's honestly really impressive but ccg they did it and they got the win behind it and i believe we are gonna have trip joining us who was I'd say, in my opinion, the MVP, he was the most consistent player throughout the series. Oh, for, for sure. When it comes to consistency, I think you got to give it to Trip. Trip was incredibly consistent. JJ might have had some crazy, flashy plays, but I feel like Trip was more con con consistent and overall a bit better of a team player. But at the end of the day, CS2 is not one on one, it's five versus five. And today, CCG as a unit. They improvised, adapted, and they overcame Crouch Shoot. So that is going to do us for now. We are going to be right back with an interview with Trip, our MVP of the match. So make sure that you don't go anywhere. And we are back with Trip from the CCG roster. Of course, Trip, you just won your third match in a row, 13 to 9. How are you feeling? I uh, feel good. Um... They made a little run at us on their T side, but we held them off. So feels good to be three now. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, um, it must feel amazing. But okay, one thing that I really want to know: what the hell happened in that single timeout? You guys completely had a mood shift. It seemed like the confidence shifted. Jason Schiller was moving along, moving alone and quite confidently, and he was finding consistent first bloods in like three of the, in the four rounds that followed. What exactly went down in that timeout? Um, I don't remember the specific round, but I think I know what you're talking about. Um, I mean, we I just, when we're, we're playing time. slow, usually we move into, like, some aggression stuff, but I think that time we were just leaning more towards, like, stacks and letting, you know, like you said, JJ work and get an opener. Um, they just weren't really, they're pressuring the extremities a lot, and it's pretty hard to get a kill towards A, so I think we just let the, send a couple guys towards B and let them, you know, get around for us. Yeah. Oh, uh, so I, I also have a question. Trip, you kind of went insane. Looking at your stat line, 23 and 10 on the day. That is pretty crazy. Let's also not forget 30% headshot, five MVPs, as well as two triple kills went down. And also, I, 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 I want to talk about that last round. You switched to the pistol? Uh, wait. Oh, was he lit? Temple? Yeah. You switched to the pistol <laughs> hey, hey, and not, not the clutch. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I was really coming in here. Like, I was going crazy off camera. This guy switched to the pistol! <laughs> and it still worked out! Uh, yep. I, I Got it over. Got it over. I actually don't think the player was lit. It was just a headshot. <laughs> I, I, yeah. He, I, don't know, I, he think I, opt, I think I opt him. At the last shot of the game? Yeah. I think. I, don't know, I opt him. Different. Nice. All right. Well, I, I actually really want to know about how, because this is, this is my first uh, broadcast uh, in this new season, and, I, and we know you have had a roster shift as well. Uh, but we know Jay Casper is the replacement, and you, you, ha you guys have played Jay Casper with, uh, with him before, and he was your substitute prior as well. But j just generally speaking, how has it been you know, moving him into the permanent roster and just playing every match with him? Uh, uh, is, it, is it affecting positively so far? Is there still some things that you guys need to figure out, or is it going smooth sailing full, full time? Uh, I mean, so it's definitely a play style shift. As you guys know, Mo played extremely aggressive with the op he would go for whatever he felt like and we we're super supportive and we we're like confident to play around him and let him do his thing and we'll support him um jordan's more of a standard opper that's not taking any anything away from him. he's very good and he's i mean i guess you haven't been here to see but he's been fragging out for us so um it's just a play style shift really um that's that's all I can really say. I mean, it makes it it changes the way we play, but it hasn't been a hard change since it's it's almost a little more standard. 
Yeah, th that's good. And I did check the stat lines, and uh, he was the MVP, I believe, in the first matchup. So, I mean, as long as it's working out for you guys, there is nothing more that I could possibly want. So, hopefully, you guys continue this dominance that you have started off with, and don't do me like you did last season, please, <laughs> for, the, for the love of God, Trip. Uh, but anyhow, uh, good luck uh, for your upcoming matches, and hopefully I'll see you Wednesday. Yep, sounds good. See you then. All right, uh, and I believe that is going to be it for us on the CCG broadcast yep. as well. Uh, it has been a fantastic evening so far, uh, a, a really close game. But ooh, as mentioned earlier, we are going to have another matchup on Wednesday, so make sure you tune in for that. But without further ado, it's going. This is going to be me and myself and Tucker signing off. So uh, hopefully, we'll see you on Wednesday. But until then, this is goodbye.